ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಲೀಶೈಲೇಶಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂಜೀವಚ್ಚಾಧಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥಸ್ಮಾರಂಭಾ
which is more important at that moment. Actually, there, there is no contradiction between the two. But many times when you are seriously explaining a very subtle point in the class, suppose there is a distraction, then it is not replaced. So from that point of view, this <coughs> saying that Shalbar Redundu the correct shape of everything has been mentioned. But ultimately, <coughs> everything leads to the same destination or goal, so there is no problem. And uh, one more uh, sentence I would like to add in, in this uh, incidental discussion. If you want to see the contradiction alone, then there is contradiction everywhere. Whereas if you want to see how there is convergence, then you can see that everywhere there is convergence. So it depends upon the person rather than the issue in these matters. That we have to remember very carefully. <clears throat> so we go to we continue with the sutras. Ishwaranai Orin Davari Hal Rakshakarallari and Nomidam Prapanna Paritrana Tile Shonom Rakshikum Podu Virat is an Ijivan to Hayale Idivesh, he summoned them Manusandayam. So when the Supreme Lord protects us, so what is protection? Anishta nivartakattam, ishta prapakattam. This is what is known as protection. Dakshanam rakshikkayavadi. Anishta nivartakattam, ishta prapakattam. What do you mean by protection? The specific definition of the word rakshana or protection, etc. It's a technical term in this context. So. It's not only physical protection, it does not refer to that type of a protection, but <clears throat> warding off the undesirable aspects and providing or facilitating what is desired. That is what is known as protection or rakshana. So when the Supreme Lord protects the Jivatma or the individual soul, it is mandatory to have the presence of the goddess Sri or Lakshmi. So without her presence, a thing will happen. There is no activity without the presence of presence and also the not only simple presence, but very meaningful presence. This is very important. <clears throat> so in Nyaya Shastra, Tarka Shastra, there is a very interesting uh, issue that is discussed. So when we say, when we decide the cause and effect relationship, this is a bit technical but very important. Cause and effect relationship is, we talk about what is known as Anvaya and Vitireka. That is, <clears throat> for example, if there is a potter, then a pot can come into being. If there is no pot, the pot the potter, the potter, pot cannot come into being. So, etra etra kulada ha, tatra tatra khata. Etra etra kulada bhava ha, tatra tatra khata bhava ha. So, this is known as Anvaya and Vitireka. So, with these two rules, we actually decide the cause and the cause and effect relationship that exists between two entities. In this context, the potter and the pot. So if the pot can exist without the potter's intervention, then it means that the potter is not the cause of the pot. Therefore, we call this as Anvaya Vyetireka. Anvaya and Vyetireka, that is positive and negative concomitants or something like that. So that is the word used in <coughs> technical jargon, philosophical jargon, namely concomitants. Then the question is raised. So, you have Akasha or Ether, which is an eternal entity. So, it exists wherever there is an effect, because it exists, it's an omni, omnipresent entity according to the particles. So, should you consider Akasha also as the cause of all the effects that occur in this world? 
ಲೊಕೇಶನ್ it doesn't mean that it is a karma it is a cause so it has to play a very important role in the process of the effect coming to existence so in this context it is not that it is coincidental that she is since lord is there she is also there so it's mere coincidence that she always exists when the process of protection takes place no it is not coincidence it is most meaningful it is in fact mandatory without the presence of she in a meaningful manner the pro process of protection of a jivatma cannot happen so that is why it says takshik kumbodu pirat tisam nidiven duhayade ಇನ್ಫರ್ and inferred in a very strong manner in a very correct manner no sandik padam shriyas patit tattai arulichai hira akshikum bodu in enne tudangi adavadi lakshmiya saha krishi keshaha deva karunya roopaya rakshakas sarva siddhante vedante shupigiyate ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿಯ ಸಹ ಹೃಷಿಕೇಶ ದೇವ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ದೇವ್ಯ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯ ರೂಪಯ ರಕ್ಷಕ ಸರ್ವ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತೆ ವೇದಾಂತೆ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕಾಸ್ ದಕ್ಷೆ ಶ್ರೇಯಸೀ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನನೀ ವಂದೇ ಚೈತನ್ಯಸ್ತನ್ಯದಾಯ ಶ್ರೇಯಸೀ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ ಕರುಣಾಮಿವ ರೂಪಿ so the lakshmi or goddess she he she is as a eternally associated with the supreme lord narayana and she is essentially the performer personification of compassion or daya <clears throat> so without compassion the supreme lord cannot actually protect a person protect a soul so compassion or daya is most important factor that makes the lord <coughs> enter into the act of protection or engage into the act of protection, engage in the act of protection so only along with the supreme lord narayana he is considered to be the protector rakshakah sarva siddhante giyate in all systems of thought not only in all systems of thought even in all the vedantas that is the upanishads <clears throat> so without the involvement and also we can call it as intrusion also without the intrusion of goddess lakshmi he cannot engage into the engage in the act of protection vedante shrupigiyate ngirapadiye rakshakanaana ishwaran ಚೇತನರೈರಕ್ಷಿಕ್ಕುಂಡಶೈಲ್ 
पुषकार भूतयान विराट्य सन्निधि अवश्यापेक्षित महयाने अवनुडे लक्ष्मी so if the process of protection of the jivatma has to take place it is invariably associated with the presence meaningful presence extremely meaningful presence of goddess shri or lakshmi and <clears throat> as we see in sanskrit language always the words are generated or words come into existence based on the nature of the meaning and based on the nature of the meaning the words comes into come into existence so it is actually interdependent or mutually dependent so if akara denotes lord narayana there cannot be dissociation dissociation with lakshmi so ukara has to be there and then makara is jiva which is going to be explained later but here swami manavala mamni says why did pilloka acharya say it will shri sambandham manusande why not lakshmi sambandham manusande here also the word shri is very significant because he says lakshmi ennade shri ennade shrayate iti shri hi engira engira padiye avane nitya sevai pannuhe aale avanodi velukkundana avinabhavam shriyate iti shri hi engira padiye chetanarkke ivil nitya sevyaya irukkum ennu ennu maduvum thottu haikaha so why not use the word lakshmi rather than shri no the word shri alone can be used in this context because it is very significant in the sense shrayate iti shri shriyate iti shri there are two etymological derivations for the word shri the first one is shrayate iti shri shrayate means who is always associated with who always resides We all are familiar with the word Ashraya. A is the prefix and Shraya is the word. So Shraya te iti shrihi, that means who eternally resides. Where does she reside? She resides in Lord Narayana. And along with, she resides in Narayana. She resides along with Lord Narayana. <laughs> Because avanai nitya sevai pannuhe ane. she is eternal engaged in the eternal service of his lord narayana and therefore avanodu ivalukku undana avinabhava avinabhava is what it is known as invariable concomitance that means one cannot exist without the presence of the other so they say there is no smoke without fire so smoke always coexists with fire but this is not a very good example it's a very mundane example but in this case avalukku undana avinabhavam that means invariable concomitance as it is known in <coughs> philosophical parlance but in this we also say there cannot be the existence of one without the other that is one explanation of the word shrihi which means shrayate that means one who is eternally engaged engaged and closed associated etc with the lord narayana second one is shriyate iti shrihi one who is always worshiped the word shrihi also has the meaning shriyate sa or shriyate iyam we call it as karmani vyutpatti shriyate iti shrihi is kartari vyutpatti that means she is the person who is the agent or karta of the activity of shrayana or existing in that particular location called lord narayana or with lord narayana the second interpretation is known as karmani vyutpatti which means she is the entity that is sought after shriyate iti shrihi so she is sought after by all the souls individual souls 
because she has to play a very important role when the Lord engages or starts to engage in the protection of the individual soul. Shri Yataiti Shri Hi Yen Girapadiye Chetunarki Vali Nitya Sevyaya Irukkum Yennum Adum Tottu Haikaha So that is why he has used the two words, namely the word Shri rather than Lakshmi. So Lakshmi has a different connotation. Lakshma Asya Stiti Lakshmi. And so she is having a particular Lakshma Chinnam Lakshma Chalakshanam. That is the Supreme Lord himself is her unique symbol. That is why she is known as Lakshmi. But that is not very relevant here because the word Shri is relevant here. That is why he says Shri Sammandham Penduhayade. <clears throat> then we come to the next sutra. Atra Bhagavat Senapati Mishravakyam Avan Marva Vitta Pirivil Vaksharam Vitta Pirivade. So to prove that point, he quotes a very important <coughs> uh, a very important uh, sentence that was mentioned by a great, great Acharya known as Senapati Jiya. So we don't know much about this, about the historicity of this person who is known as Senapati Jiya. Senapati means Vishak Sena. So <coughs> that is who comes in the Guru Parampara. So this Jiya was having the name as Senapati Jiya. So he is quoted here as Bhagavat Senapati Mishra. So the word Bhagavan is appended to the name of the Jiya. As I mentioned, the word Bhagavan is very significant as far as when it is used to denote the Supreme Lord. It means Bhagavan means Shanna Bhagaiti Rana, that is Jnana, Shakti, Bala, Aishwarya, Virya, and Tejas. So a person who possesses all these six qualities in totality is known as Bhagavan. Whereas when we say Bhagavad Ramanja, Bhagavad Jamana Muni, Bhagavad Ramanja Muni, Bhagavad Senapati Mr. Vakim, it means a person who has attained the darshan or attained the experience of the Supreme Lord. <coughs> he is known as Bhagavan. <coughs> so, Ityadiyare Aravade Vidatile Jnana Adhikarana Shri Senapati Jiyare Arudityayum Vartai Jnana Adhikar means he is a highly, highly, highly evolved person. He is a highly knowledgeable person. So he says, Ahala Hille Nireyuminne Avan Tirumar Vile Ityavasum Pannam Ival Marvavit Piriyalaitu Yuvanek Pratiparakama Avanek Pratiparakama Nayu Vaksharatai Vittu Piriyavanengai So in the sixth sixth uh, symptom of the Trivai Muri <coughs> in the last final Dashaka or the final decade Nambadvar says Ahala hill nen ireyu minne adar mel mangne yure maru when he addresses the Lord Srinivasa of Tirumala, who is known as Venkateshara and several other names, Trivengada Mudiyan, etc. Or Trivengada Tan, as Tamarvar himself calls him. He says, there is Nitya Yoga, that is eternal association between the <coughs> Goddess Sri and the Chest region of the Supreme Lord. So he says, Avar mail mange yure marbha. Marbha means that is what he says, Avan marbha vittu piriyan, vivaksharam vittu piriyan. She is eternally established in the hridaya or the heart, heart region of the Supreme Lord. That is why he says, it is said, Vivakshmi, Vishnu akshasthalalaya. Where does she reside? She resides in the Hridaya or the heart of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. That is why she is known as Vishnu Akshasthalaya. And is there even one moment of dissociation between them? No. 
So as I mentioned earlier, the words in Sanskrit always are in line with the meaning and the meaning is always in line with the nature of the word. The word is in line with the, is totally congruent to the meaning, to the nature of the meaning. And the nature of the meaning is totally congruent to the nature of the word that denotes it, in Sanskrit language especially. Though it is said to be like that in other, other languages also, we can verify it in every instance in Sanskrit language. That is the beauty of Sanskrit. So he says, only in such a scenario where she would separate herself from the heart of the Lord, then there would arise a scenario of the two alphabets or varnas becoming separate. So since that does not exist, this also does not exist. So there is Nitya Yoga or eternal association between the Supreme Lord and his concern, Goddess Lakshmi or Shri. In Giravittanayum Kata the Bodu, Kiro, Yuvakim Yendre, and Giravitanium, Kata the Bodu, Kiro, Yuvakim, and Vayade, Italavan Tigamar will summon them, Yvadakin, Itiamahayade, Avan thought to Vidakide, Yvadam thought to Hay, thought to Hay, Nishtiamahayade, and then the Supreme Lord takes incarnation. She is also. She also has to take incarnations. <laughs> it cannot be otherwise. That is why it is said, Raghavatve Apavat Sita Rukmini Krishna Janmani Anyeshu Chavatareshu Vishnu Shri Ranapai. <coughs> so it's a very beautiful statement, very powerful statement. And it is said in said by one of the Alvars that. When the Lord incarnated as Vamana, so he purposefully and intentionally covered his chest region with the Krishna Jina or the deer skin because Bali Chakravarti should not see that portion and realize that this is Lord Vishnu himself. <laughs> because if he sees the Chinha of Lakshmi or Goddess Sri, he will immediately make out that this is Lord Vishnu only. <clears throat> so that is why um, Swami Parashara Bhattar says in the Shri Kuna Ratna Kosha very beautifully, he says, Vedanta Tattva Chinta Murabhi Durasi Yat Pada Chinhai Karati. Very beautiful statement. So there was a big discussion as to who is the Supreme Lord. Then they started surveying all the gods. So when they surveyed the chest of Lord Vishnu or Narayana, they immediately saw the footprints of Goddess Lakshmi. And immediately it was decided we need not go any further because the footprints of Goddess Lakshmi are present on the chest of, the, of this person or <laughs> other. That they don't say Lord Narayana here. Since this person, <laughs> so to explain the greatness and uniqueness of Sri, it is mentioned this person possesses the <coughs> footprints of Goddess Lakshmi on his chest. Therefore, he is the Supreme Lord. So he became Supreme just because of the association with Sri and not by himself. So that is the greatness given to Goddess Lakshmi. That is why in North India, the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya is known as Sri Sampradaya. <coughs> and even one person very beautifully proclaimed, it is not only Sri Sampradaya, it is Stri Sampradaya. <laughs> it means the women Sampradaya or women uh, tradition. Because women are given utmost prominence in this tradition. <laughs> So Nishchai Nishchitama Hayade Avan Dirumar will Anvayato Padi Avanak Vachakamana Akaratilam Vayamum Nivalakanichim Yanadaiti. 
Therefore, akara cannot exist without ukara, and akara and ukara cannot dissociate from each other in every context. That is very important. Then, how do we actually see this in the different avatars? So, one very important thing is she is eternally associated with the Supreme God. But then, what has got that, that God to do with the protection of the souls, individual souls who are their children? For that, he says, Bharta avinudeya padithayum Prajayinudeya tottinayum vidade irikkum mata vipole Prathamacharapa padangale vidade irikkum irippu Extremely beautiful analogy. <clears throat> so, a woman gets married to a man. She is eternally indebted to him, eternally associated with him, in eternal love with him. And then she has a child. So, nowadays we see that many women, after they have children, they will completely neglect the husband. And some some cases we may see that some people in in these days they may neglect their children out of love for their husband. But an ideal housewife, an ideal grihini, an ideal mother will never neglect any of these two, that is her husband as well as her children. So Bharta Vinudya Padikkayum Brade Inudya Tottilayum Vidare Irukum. So the ideal mother will never neglect or dissociate from the cradle of the baby which is next to her or she will also never dissociate herself from the thought of her husband. So she is the, and many a times what happens when the son and the father in, I am telling in the worldly aspect, Many a times the son and the father have differences of opinion. It is the mother that is the binding agent. In fact, she is the binding agent of the family. When there is discord between the children and the father, she is the person who binds them. She is the person, if the children are wrong, she will actually counsel them and tell them that what your father is saying is correct, do it. If the father is wrong, then she will say what the children are saying is correct. You please don't do it or do it, whatever is the case. So the woman is, is the pivotal point of the family. So without her presence, the family will actually disintegrate. That is why they said in Sanskrit, Grihini Griham Uchyate. So the house will be called as a house only when there is a Grihini or a woman in that house. Otherwise, the house ceases to be a house. <laughs> so that's why very beautifully how, how they have observed the natural happenings in this world and how they have expressed it here. It's a very beautiful thing. Bharta vinudiya padikkayam prajainudiya tottilayam vidade irukkum mata vaipode prathama jarama padangalai vidade irukkum irukkum so this ukara is eternally associated with akara, which is the first alphabet. It is also equally associated with makara, which is the subsequent a, u and ma. So ukara is the one that binds makara with the akara. That is how the pranava has come into existence. How beautiful explanation. So just as the mother binds the father and the children, when, when the child is young, she will neither leave the cradle of the son or child, nor the cot of the husband. Later also, she plays a similar sort of role when she binds these two together. She is the binding factor. I have seen many houses of my own house and when my mother used to be there. And many other houses where I have relatives, etc where it is the <coughs> woman of the house who plays the main role in binding, keeping the 
flock of the family together. So differences of opinion are natural in every family. So in India, where you we had until recently, we had a very strong family system. Now it has, due to the uh, Western influence, nobody should mistake me because the Indians are engaged in aping the West <laughs> in most matters. So we think that that is the best. Whereas the West appreciates the Indian culture, etc. So <clears throat> it is it's a very bad state of affairs. <clears throat> but it is the woman of the house who actually binds the entire and keeps the flock of the family together. So therefore she says, Prathama Jarama Padangalai Vidade Irikkumirippi So Swami so Manavad Mamli beautifully uh, comments upon this. Adavade Shesha Bhutaya Natan Swarupa Tikkacherum Padi Avanai Rasippi Kaikaha Bhartha Vinude Padikkayum Vidade Rakshakaya Natan Swarupa Tikkum Porum Padi Tadrakshanam Padna Haikaha Pradayinude Tottilayum Vidade Irikkum Matava Navalippo De Yivalam Bhartra Bhutanana Ishwara Nekka Pratipada Pratipada Kamayinum Dulla Prathama Padamana Akarattayum Raja Bhutanana Jetanarikka Pratipada Pratipada Kamayi Irin Dulla Jarama Padamana Makarattayum Tattad Vishetil Tanakka Undana Sammandetthikku Eedaha Rasipikkai Rakshikkai Ahira Ivattai Patta Vidade Irikkumirippu Yengai So, Swami Manavala Mamani very beautifully says, she very beautifully understands her specific role in the family. So as far as her, her husband is concerned, he has, she has to keep him happy in all respects. So she realizes that duty of hers. As far as the children are concerned, she is their protector initially. So she realizes that role also. And very beautifully balances both these roles. This is very important. How to balance the roles? Because suppose there is a son. When he gets married, his wife will tell something and his mother will tell something. So the role of the son who is married becomes very delicate because he cannot go against the wishes of his mother or he cannot go against the wishes of his wife, especially when he gets newly married in the Indian scenario where they are living in the same place. So he has to manage this and balance the two roles when there is some contradiction. If there is no contradiction, there is no problem. But there is contradictory views between the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law. It is the son who plays a pivotal role in keeping the unity together. Similarly, the wife or the lady of the house, she has a very important role. She has to balance between her, the services she has to render to her husband as a wife. And also she, the duties she has to render towards her children as their protector. And there is none other than Goddess Sri who can, who is the role model for this. So that is why he gives one more example. Sri Nanda Goparayam Krishnanayam Vidada Yashore Pirati Pole Just like Pirati Yashoda who neither neglected Nanda Gopa, her own husband, not neglected her child, Krishna. <coughs> so, he says, Kil chunna drishtan tattai uru vishesha nishtamakya rudichai hirat Shri Nanda Goparayam Krishnanayam vidade yenne todangi Adavade bhariyayaratam swarupat swarupanu gunamaha Rasipikaikaha, 
പ്രഥമ ജനമവാ പദവാച്യരാന ഈശ്വര ചേതനർഹൾ ഇരുവരെയും വിടാതെ ഇവളും വർത്തിക്കും പടിയങ്കൈ സോ ഇൻ ദി സെവൻറ്റീൻ സ്റ്റാൻസ് ഓഫ് ദി തിരുപ്പാവി ഓഫ് ഗോദാദേവി ആറാണ്ട അമ്പരമേ തണ്ണീരേ ഷോരേ അരം ചെയ്യും എമ്പെരുമാർ നന്ദഗോപാലായങ്കിതായി കൊമ്പനാർക്കെല്ലാം കൊളുന്റേ കുടവിളക്ക് എമ്പെരുമാട്ടി യശോദായ് അരിയൂര വെരി ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ ഇൻസിഡന്റ് സോ ഗോദാദേവി ആറാണ്ട ഹു ഹാസ് ഹു ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി ഇൻ എ വെരി ഹൈലി എവാൾഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഡിവോഷൻ she wants to take all the gopikas she considers herself to be a gopi who is staying in the nandagopula so she first collects all the fellow gopikas <coughs> to go to lord krishna and approach him for a particular thing so she a very beautiful uh, scenario where the tirupavi we have a beautiful composition of just 30 stanzas by the young andal who was though she was young she was fully fully mature so that is why so i manavada mamuni says in his upadesha ratna mala pinjai paluttaale andal so though she was so young she was fully ripe so generally fruits become ripe after a particular period of time but the greatness of andal was she became fully ripe in the sense she attained the highest level of devotion or bhakti when she was very very young probably she was just 5 years old <clears throat> so when they go they uh, she collects up uh, brings together all the gopikas and then they go to the place of krishna where she first sings the suprabhata or the morning song to lord krishna before that she actually tries to awaken nanda gopala and then yashoda and in this context she actually says ambarame tannire shore aram shiyum nanda gopala and so many a times when we have to approach somebody we do not know what is known as the protocol protocol is the right for it actually so suppose we have to meet a young boy in the house we don't go directly to him first his parents are approached even in india even today suppose a person wants to give his daughter to the in in marriage to a young youth who is about 20 or 25 years old he is not approached his parents are approached so it's not like i give your daughter to me and you get you get married to my daughter it's not so because it is the bonding of two families that is very important which will facilitate the bonding of the husband and wife so they are called as sambandhi in sanskrit <laughs> in the sanskrit and also in local languages so when they want to give even the parents of a bride want to give their daughter in marriage to a youth he is never approached <laughs> he comes only at a later stage <clears throat> so it is the parents of the groom who are approached and then they match the horoscopes etc that is very important because and people might say this is all humbug or right it's all superstition or so it's not like that because several personal and interpersonal issues are involved so only if they are assured that their uh, horoscopes match in the sense that they will have a good life together etc in all aspects very highly personal aspects as well as societal aspects etc there, there is all highly evolved processes of matching the horoscope how many how many aspects are favorable how many aspects are not favorable etc it's a highly scientific methodology and now lot of uh, statistical analysis also is being conducted in these aspects and if we uh, we see astounding results in the sense how far sighted our forefathers were 
<clears throat> so nowadays though in india itself and the indians themselves deride these things we are slowly due to the advance of advance advent of advanced science we are able to realize the value of several of these things but we cannot help if some people are biased against tradition or something like that <clears throat> so therefore what goda devi or andal does is she first sings the suprabhatam to nanda gopala and yashoda and then only she sings the sings the suprabhata to lord krishna and before that she does it to madara so she understands the hierarchy very well and according to that only she does it which is quoted here putra rana krishna nude krishna neyam vidade ambarame indira पाटिल शंगु हिरपडिये मध्यवर मध्ये वर्तिकुम यशो ओले पिराट्ये पोले चरम पद प्रथम चरम पद वाच्यरान ईश्वर चेतन रहण वरयुम इरुवरयुम बिडादे इवळुम वर्तिकुम पडी एंगई सो शी नाइदर गिव्स अप द रिलेशनशिप विद द सुप्रीम लॉ Nor does she give up the relationship with the Supreme Lord. Neither she neglects neither of them. She gives equal prominence to both of them at the times when they deserve those prominences. And the best example is Yashoda Devi, who is the mother of Lord Krishna. Similarly, here the Shri plays a very important role. She keeps the Supreme Lord Narayana in good humor. Put to put it in very modern terminology, she keeps him in good humor. She also ensures the protection of the souls by uniting the soul with the supreme lord. <clears throat> so this is a very very important role that is played by Goddess Sri, which is denoted by the Ukara, which is binding the Akara and Makara, denoting the supreme lord, Narayana, and the individual soul respectively so here we conclude this we have completed 43 sutras so we conclude the exposition in this sutra we continue with the 44th sutra next week so swami can i uh, ask some questions and make some comments yeah, of course <laughs> okay <laughs> last uh, before <coughs> last week we had the, the uh, temple festival that is why there was no there was no opportunity for discussion now there is no problem okay great um i don't know i, I have to look back and see what my questions were from before maybe i didn't have so many questions because it was a short session um here okay so can you explain how what do i see shri as a ishwara tatva and tangle i see her as chaitanya tatva uh, that's a very controversial topic and uh, it's not to say that some this is correct that is the correct or that is going correct or this one <clears throat> so there is a statement by vedanta deshika which says and which applies to us also as far as i can understand i understand tvamevahu katichira pare tatpriyam lokanatham kintai rantah kalahavaninaihi kinchid uttirya magnaihi and ultimately he says uh, daivatam dampati naha so some people say you are supreme and he is supreme so when some aspects are considered so when somebody can say the lord narayana becomes supreme only on association of shri then shri herself is more supreme than lord narayana some people might say like that so there are several such debates so let us not worry about those debates because she says antah kalana malinaihi kinchid uttirya magnai so sometimes this school of thought seems to gain ascendance sometimes that school of thought seems to gain ascendance but as far as i am concerned both of you are our gods then the question might arise as to then how do you say once kadar raised this question 
then why you should say vishishta advaita and not vishishta advaita <clears throat> so when you see lord narayana as a single entity because she also is part of you so we are going to come across the statement sananya raghavena bhaskarena prabhayata just as the uh, rays of the sun cannot be separated from the sun <clears throat> so do you say we worship the sun and we worship the sun's rays separately no you worship the sun his rays are also influenced sun there is no sun without his rays <laughs> but when you say the rays exist in the sun then you may say that the rays are separate and the sun is separate from a logical point of view so ultimately there is there are there is a stage or state of existence where she is one with the supreme lord so that is a different state then there is another state when you say this are they are they are different from the sun in the sense when you say the rays exist in the sun then there has to be what we call as aadhar aadhe bhava between these two <clears throat> so the I, the book is on the table book and table cannot be one because one is resting on the other or one is located in the other so at that time you give a separate role to shri when she plays that role but ultimately what happens it is lord narayana and his shakti which is only one entity so when when you see from the ultimate tattva point of view it is vishta advaita only there is only one entity lord lord narayana lord narayana just like so the it is very simple just like we have vishta advaita now there is, we say there is only one tattva but chida chid vishishtam ekameva tattvam we say not like advaitins so we say advaita vishishta advaita means chida chid vishishtam ekameva tattvam only one tattva lord narayana consisting of chitta and achit but when you consider these three separately then you have tattva treya is it contradictory to each other no it's not contradictory Similarly, it is like that only, as far as we can see. Okay, so <laughs> that is Jiva Koti or Ishara Koti. This this question does not arise when you see it from this point of view. But many a times, what happens? People raise such type of tricky questions just to create a wedge between two schools, which is not correct at all. So, but I was uh, one thing I was interested in is uh, vyapaka and uh, guna vyapti and swarupa vyapti. So, if you say that she is always with Lord Narayana, in what way is she always with Lord Narayana? Because we read in Vishnu Purana sometimes uh, it says it may say that she's always with Lord Narayana, uh, yes. but and in Pancharatra, but uh, in what way? she is in what way is she all pervasive because we know that no, normally the chaitanyas are not all pervasive they are not vyapti we are not jivatma no, when, when, when when you when you actually elevate her to this place of the lord himself then he say all the things that apply to the lord are applicable to her also only in that sense you have to take it actually because you cannot have two ishras <laughs> and it starts so also it has not been mentioned like that also <clears throat> so if you feel she is separate then you attribute you say all the attributes that exist in narayana also exist in her but that is only in a particular condition of existence when you give her a separate existence separate uh, temple separate thing etc then what happens so many things apply to her but when you see it from the point of view of the tattva there is only one tattva that is shriman narayana narayana consisting of lord shri that is why i said it's like you have three tattvas and you have one tattva in vishta advaita we have only one tattva because chitta chitta system ekameva tattva only one tattva but when you consider chitta and achitta as two separate tattvas that exist in this world you have tattva three 
So uh, never in any place, never Siddhanta, we have said that these two are contradictory because they are complementary rather than contradictory. So is it is it possible for uh, the jivas in moksha, a, a chetana in moksha, to also have guna vyapti? Can uh, garudan and uh, and adisheshan and uh, Yes, they, they, they can also be with Narayana. Sayujya, Samana is what is Sayujya? So all the, all the Chaitanas are equal. There is no doubt about that. But they cannot have certain very unique qualities, characteristics of the Lord, like Shriya Patitva, Degadhyaya, Para, etc., which has been mentioned in the last or the final Adhikarana of the Shibhasha. Still, there exists a small iota of distinction between them. You may call it as an iota of distinction, you may call it as a huge distinction. <laughs> so even though the Chaitanya is equal to the Supreme Lord in all respects, still there can, there has to be some, so still there, there, there continue to exist some distinction. So that is why some people have said, Ishan Vedagar Praha Veda. So there is a Veda or union between the two, consisting of a small iota of Veda distinction. So my guru used to say, see how much ever you play with these words, you will not be able to understand it because that what happens there, there are no words that denote the state that exists there that can be used here because we are totally unaware of what that state is. So maximum, that is why it has been said, Jagatya There can be, there continues to exist some distinction. That what I have said. Okay, so I can understand that uh, Lord Narayana is symbolized by the Akara, and uh, uh, Sri is symbolized by Ukara, and yes. the Maka, the Makara in in the Pranava is is symbolizing the other Chaitanas, the other. Yeah, Jiva Jiva Vachi. It has been said yeah. as Jiva. But and sometimes, sometimes in Sanskrit we see that the the akara and U, and ukara are separate varnas, but other times they are put together and they become okara. They become a they become a one letter o, okara. Yeah, of course. Here also it does. It is the same. It has become o. Yes. Right. So that's why sometimes we see uh, om as written a u m and sometimes as o m because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so my question is, if, if Akara and Ukara are always together with Om, if Lord Narayana is always together with Sri, then also why, I don't, I'm trying to understand why, I'm tr also trying to understand why in Deshika Sampradaya, they separate it and they, they give Om to, to ladies and so just instead of Om. Because no, that is that is uh, that is that is not dependent upon this meaning. Uh, the meaning <coughs> is not significant. <coughs> that is due to some other reason, uh, which is uh, associated with the yoga shastra and not with this. <laughs> okay, so let's leave that. So because, you also... because the pranava, the original sound of pranava, it's a very deep topic. I just. It is mentioned that those who are not are uh, authorized to study the Vedas. So it is mentioned that Mastri Shudra Veda Madhi So even, for example, the Panchakshari, Shiva Panchakshari, it is there. It is not associated with Pranava. When Brahmins, even Brahmins, when they take the Upadesha of Shiva Panchakshari, it cannot be, they will not associate Pranava with it. That is due to the mystical forces associated with the aksha, uh, respective aksharas or varnas or alphabets. So that is a different, uh, that's in a different dimension altogether. It has got nothing to do with this distinction. <laughs> okay, so uh, you also mentioned that uh, Sri is always with Lord Narayana in different incarnations. Uh, in the for, in, in Rama Avatara, she comes as Sita. In Krishna Avatara, she comes as Rukmini. And some other sampradayas, they elevate the idea of of when when the goddess is separated 
they 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 say this is a very high rasa or a high bhava when when she is separated. So we see in Ramayana that uh, Sita is separated from Rama when she is in Lanka and and in Krishna Avatara, in Krishna Avatara, uh, Radha is separated from Krishna. We lost your um, video. Uh, when you say they're always together, but sometimes in Leela we see that they're apart. Can you explain that? Is the is only physical, not uh, it's a symbolic separation only. So it's not an essential separation. It is no, only no, no. it is only no, external. No. no. So he says because in the Sundarakanda specifically, Rama Anjaneya that is Hanuman says, "Asya Devya Manastasmim Stasya Chasyaam Pratishtitam." Even for one moment, Lord cannot, Lord Rama cannot live without her. And without for one moment also, she cannot live without him. But how is it that they are still holding on to their lives? So she says, Asya Devya Manas Tasmin Tasya Asya Manaha Pratishti. His mind is established in her and her mind is established in him. Therefore, both of them are leaving even for a moment. Though that physically is supposed to be separated. So that's why he says, uh, nobody can separate me and Rama. That's what he says and uh, Lord Bhagavan Mahamani is going to quote that in the next sutra, <laughs> in his explanation. Okay, so uh, finally, you were mentioning about Andal and Tirupawai and how Andal in Tirupawai, first of all, she wakes uh, Nandagopa. She, she wants to wake Nandagopa, then she wants to wake Yasoda, and then afterwards Krishna. But uh, my, why doesn't she go to Yashoda first? If we, if we should go to Lord Narayana through Lakshmi, why, should, if, <laughs> if, why shouldn't she go to Yashoda first? It seems like uh, no, there, if a girl there comes, a hierarchy, hierarchy is important because Yashoda is not called as Lakshmi. <laughs> but in in this example, the example of Yashoda is given to for us to understand the position of Lakshmi. So Yashoda so, is given to explain, understand the position of Lakshmi in the sense she does not she neither neglects Nandagopa nor Krishna. So the the drishtanta are the analogies for that aspect, not for the purushakara aspect. <laughs> so then, uh, we are, are we to take the uh, example of Andal? If we take the example of Andal, should we not go to Lord Narayana and then wake him first and then No, no, no. That is why I said, this I said, the first... Uh, um, when she actually wakes up Krishna in the next stanza, he first wakes up Napinai, and then only she wakes up uh, Lord Krishna. <laughs> In the next stanza, Kuttavila Kariya Kortakal Katinai. Yes. Okay, and uh, what exactly is the what exactly is the situation of Napinai? What is what is the understanding Napinai of Napinai? Is, Napinai is you have uh, three consorts: Sri Devi, Bhu Devi, and Nila Devi. So Nila Devi is supposed to be Napinai. And uh, according to the, when you see, go deep into the Tattva aspect, so Sri Devi is his divine power, which cannot be separated from him. And Bhu Devi is the representation of the earth or all the other things. So then you have Nila, Naila, Nila. It should be, grammar wise, it becomes Nela, but Nela is not easy to pronounce. My guru used to tell. So it is the Jiva Tattva. It is the repre representation of the individual soul that is depicted as Nabhinna. That is Nila Devi in Sanskrit. You have Sri, Sri, Bhu, Nila. These are the three consorts. So you have two consorts. 
So in certain places you have one only concert that is Sri Devi. In certain places you have two, Sri Devi and Bhu Devi, like in all the Sri Rangam, Kanchipuram, etc. Then the Jiva Tattva is also eternally wedded or embedded <laughs> in the Lord. So it becomes, it is Neela Devi. Some people say it is, so these are all, uh, if it is not against the spirit of the Sampradaya, you can say. So Radha Devi, as is mentioned in the Iskan tradition, is considered to be Neela Devi according to some. Because the um, some of the great Acharyas, they have <coughs> mentioned about this Neela Devi equating her to Radha. Fine, if it's <coughs> not in contradiction to the accepted, then we accept it. Right, so, so Neela Devi is representing all Jivatmans or yes. she is all Jivatman, yes. not she is not just one. She is not one Jivatman. No, no, she is the personification so of, as, of, of the Jiva. The Upanishads, there is a word called Jiva Ghana. That means she is the representative of the Jiva. So ultimately, what happens? All the uh, there is a shloka in Sanskrit in the uh, Sampradaya shloka. So all the Jivatmas are like women. So, Swamitva, Atmatva, Sheshatva, Pumstva, Adhyaha, Swamino, Gunaha, Svebhyo, Dasatva, Dehitva, Vashitva, Stritva, Daya. So, Swamitvam uh, is the Supreme Lord's quality. Dasatva is the individual Lord's quality. Atmatva is the Supreme Lord's quality. Dehatva is our quality. Then Swamitva Atmatva Sheshitva. He is Sheshi and we are Sheshas. He is the Puman. He is the male and all the Jivatmas are female. In the sense that we are all subservient. But today the women's liberation people may ask, how is it that uh, the males are subservient to females? How is it that? It's not like that. It is considering the laws of nature that it has been mentioned like that. Not some husband, some uh, husband being very much subservient to his wife. It's not like that. He may do so out of love or affection or fear also in some, in some cases. <laughs> but as far as nature is concerned, the male has a role to play and female has, to, has a role to play. So uh, according to the laws of nature, the Supreme Lord is the male and all the Jivatmas are considered to be females. So there are these nine relationships between God and the jivas. Yes, uh, yes. This uh, shesha sheshi. Uh, yeah, ultimately, like the final final relationship is satipati bhava. That is, they become so close as the husband and wife. Husband and devoted wife. You can add on adjective. So, so, so if we look at these nine relationship, these nine relationships between the, the jivas and God, they also apply to Lakshmi. So, sorry. They also apply to Sri. Some may apply. Some may apply. But some, the which one is which one Shri the, Devi is the Shri Devi is the divine power of Lord Vishnu. Yes. So any other question? I think okay. some Amara or somebody, one person had come briefly. Amara, Amara was there, but he had to he had to leave. It's a different time for him. Is it uh, Amara, Amara Prabhu from uh, Germany? Germany, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Because mm -hmm. I know him for the last several years. Yeah. I know. I I just uh, saw. I thought I saw his name. So this uh, Govindachari was asking the questions about Radha and whether because we have heard some we heard some. Uh, Upanyasam by uh, Chinajira Swami, that uh, he is saying that Radha represents uh, all uh, uh, represents the a jiva that, that yes. each each one of us can be like Radha. We can worship yes, God. Yes, yes. Any, anybody can become the attempt to become the consort of the Lord. There is nothing wrong in that. Like Radha. I'm, sorry. Like Radha. Yes. So that is why I said Swamitva, Atmatva, Sheshitva, and Pumstva are the Supreme Lord's qualities. The Jivatmas are Dasatva, Dehatva, Vashitva, and Strength. Right. So but ultimately, he... all these three are the 
uh, consorts of the Supreme Lord. So incidentally, <laughs> may not be very much relevant in the Vadagalai Sampradayam until recently, until about 50 years ago. When a woman became a widow, she used to tonsher her head. But in Tengalai Sampradayam, they would not do it because when the Supreme Lord, who is the husband of all of us, exists, how can she be called a widow from that point of view? So in the Tengalai Sampradayam, the tonsuring of the head was not accepted. <laughs> because even though the physical husband has disappeared, the husband of all people still continues to exist. So he can so they considered themselves as the consorts of him only. Even in the Vivaha mantras, the uh, marriage mantras, Soma Prathamo Vivide Gandharvo Vivida Uttaraha Pritiyo Agniste Patis Turiyaste Manushyaja Somo Dadad Gandharvaya Gandharvo Dadad Agni Vainja Putra Gashchada Dagnir Mahyamito Atho Ima Very beautiful mantras. So ultimately, she is a very Jeevatma, whether they are three, especially Sthris, they are wedded to the Supreme Lord only. So they may, they may look upon the Lord, as I have seen very devoted uh, housewives, they look upon their Lord, the Lord only as their husband, no physically husband exists. And further, they may look upon the Lord as their children, as their child. That is another very highly evolved uh, system of uh, devotion, highly evolved level of evolution. So Putraval Lale Dharim is what Bhagavatam also or some Vishnu Purana mentions. So the most treasured uh, possession of a woman is her child. So I, I knew a very devout lady in uh, Sri Rangam. She used to say she had two children. But she used to say, my first child is Lord Nangunath. <laughs> Lord Nambirumar. <laughs> so we see that uh, though people, uh, males, that is, uh, we, say, we see the Lord as our protector or somebody. Really evolved uh, ladies see the Lord as their child only, rather than even their husband. <laughs> so that is another very high, high, uh, high level of thing because we see Periyadvar had, he had the bhava of Yashoda. Then even uh, Andal says, Koda Devi says, why, <coughs> why Koda Devi is very important, why she was given the highest place among the Alvars from a particular point of view. So she actually uh, awakened the Supreme Lord, not, phys not only physically, but he, he, was, he was resting on the bosom of Napinai, forgetting his duty of protecting all the Jeevatmas. <laughs> that is how beautifully uh, Parashara Bhattar has put it in the verse Neela Tungas Tanagiri Tati Suktam Udbodhya Krishnam Pararcham Swam Shruti Shita Shiras Siddham. So she ultimately became the tutor of the Lord <laughs> because he, he forgets his. Uh, duties and uh, he is uh, given to the sensual pleasures. So she is the one who actually uh, awakened him not only from his physical slumber or divine slumber let it, let it be, and actually made him realize his duty of protecting all of us. See how beautifully it has been mentioned. So, so just to, to, to cap this off, uh, Napinai, Napinai is considered to be the wife of Lord Krishna in, in uh, Tirupawa. Yes, of course. The wife, the Even wife the of Lord Krishna. says, Tirumahal, Mandmahal, Lair, Madamahal, he says. <laughs> right, but, we, but, but, but normally when we read about Krishna Leela, we don't, we don't think that he got married until he went to Dwarka. That in Vrindavanam, in Gokulam, he was not uh, married. But... Uh, there is this concept that he. he you, you don't. Uh, you don't have. Any, if you consider that as a history, then that history is not considered. So no. You see, we when we, in South India we hear a lot about. We hear Sita Kalyanam. We hear Goda Kalyanam. We hear Radha Kalyanam. 
but we don't hear Rukmini Kalyanam so much. Nobody, nobody celebrates like Rukmini Kalyanam, but they, they always... No, hear. Rukmini, Rukmini Kalyana is celebrated when Bhagavatam, Bhagavata Parayana is done. Is it? Yes. Okay. Even uh, when Ramayana Parayana is done, we, even I have celebrated Sita Kalyana several Kalyana. times. So Rukmini Kalyana is definitely celebrated when Bhagavata Parayana is done. But uh, uh, in Mahabharata, you don't celebrate. I see. Mahabharata, and, it is not there. Parayana Krama is not there. That is another big issue. <laughs> and the Goda Kalyanam comes in uh, in uh, in Natya Tirumoli. Varanamayiram. Varanamayiram. It's celebrated in all the, all the all weddings. weddings. All the Vivas. It is very significant from the very point of view also. Anyway, the knowledge is huge like an ocean. So, so the, wedding, the wedding ceremony for the jiva, that is the Samashrayanam, no? no? That is from the Tattva, tattva Drishti, yes. You are wedding the jiva Atma with the Paramatma, yes. And for Deshika Sampradaya, it's the Baranyasam or it's also the Samashrayanam? Because they, also they, put, they, they put, the, the, the they princes, put emphasis on Baranyasam. So they, they do the Sharanagati as a separate event, apart from Samashrayanam. Whereas it is included in the Samashrayanam itself, in the Tanatari Sampradaya. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th I think we kept you very long. No, no, no. Chet drama, jet, kesha, chapura, chapura, kshari, kamastham, prapadyante, jantao, antamadisha, umyam, bhoja, vikasaya, papadvam, takshayaita, shiman, ayurabhud, bhumo, rama, vijadiva, karaha, Nikrita Virinjar Viram Kushai Bhuteha Ramanjapadam Bhoja Samashay Vishabhidaha